In today's video, we're going to talk about references in Microsoft Excel. References are a key concept in Excel and whenever you use Excel, you will almost always use references, which is why it is so important to understand them well. But I will not only show you how to work with references, I will show you a special view in Excel, a special notation called R1C1 notation that will really help you understand how Excel works and things under the hood. And at least at least for me, once I first learned about this, this was a little revealing moment and after which I understood Excel much better. Welcome to another coffee break here on my channel Firm Learning. My name is Heinrich and on this channel I want to help you to become successful in the first years of your career. But now without further ado, I have my laptop here in front of me. So let's jump in and I will show you how Excel works under the hood. So here we are now in the middle of Excel and I just prepared now a very basic simple example. Let's now imagine we have different companies or different subsidiaries of a company and they have had sales figures here for the different quarter and now you want to sum up these sales figures. So I trust almost all of you would be able to do that. There's different ways to do it. I guess you can just set up a basic sum function like this. You mark then the range that you want to sum up. And then now here you have the sum of these values included. Now what most people will do now to really get it down until the very end is just to copy this formula and then just insert it here below in these fields. And now what you can see is that the formula automatically adjusted here now really to change the range to the relative range down here. And at least when I started to use Excel, while I had kind of an intuitive understanding that you could just kind of drag down formulas in this way, I often struggle to really understand how exactly does it work because Excel or somehow seems to recognize that here there are some fields below as well and then can adapt the range automatically. And now let's just contrast that with just a made up little other example. So let's imagine here you have workers who work different shifts and these are now hours that they work in this shift. And now the worker one has here these two uh, shifts that he worked. And now, of course, if you now just copy that down, Excel is not able to directly recognize that now actually the fields with data switch and change, right? So here Excel doesn't give you the correct number that you want. And overall, I just perceive this to be rather random. And probably this was just due to my naivety in the beginning, but I just didn't seem to figure out how exactly these changes in reference work. And what helped me really understand this on a technical level is to learn about the different reference styles, the different notations that Excel uses. And what we are all familiar with is a so-called A1 notation. And this means that the columns are referenced in letters, right? So A, B, C, D, E, and so on. And then the rows are referenced in numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. This is called the A1 notation. But you can actually change this reference style to something that is called the R1C1 notation, R for rows and C for columns. And this makes Excel show you all the references, both for the rows and for the columns with numbers. And while I would not recommend you use this alternative reference style on a daily basis, there are some things to learn from it, how Excel actually works under the hood. So let's just check it out. And to get there, you need to click here on file and then on options. And then in the options menu, you click on formulas and then you need to check this checkbox here for the R1C1 reference style. And let's activate it. And now if you click here into the formulas, you directly see that the reference styles are somewhat different. They don't look like they looked before. But now before we jump into this, let me now explain to you on a conceptual level how this works. What you need to understand is that now the reference style is always relative to the cell that you're currently in. So if you're now typing in a formula, in this cell and now you want to make a reference to another formula, you now always need to define both the rows and the column relative to this one cell. And how it works is for the columns that columns to the right of the reference cell are referenced with a plus. So this would be plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four and so on. 
and columns to the left would be referenced with the minus. So this would be the column minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and so on. And the same thing now for the rows. If you go up, this is actually a minus reference. So this would be row minus one, minus two, minus three, you get the idea. And if you go down, this is a plus. So this will be the row plus one, plus two, plus three, and so on. So let's make an example. If you now are in this cell and you actually want to reference this one here, this would be, you start with the rows. So this would be the row one, two, so minus two comma, and then the columns, this would be now the column one, two, because it's two columns to the left. So minus two as well. And now another example, if you want to reference this field here, this would be in the rows one, two, three, four, so plus four, and then one on the column because it's one to the right, so plus one. So if this makes sense, now let's just see in practice how this looks like. And I'll just prepare here just a sheet with some random ones just to reference a few numbers. If we now would want to reference this field here, now it links, you see that it returns me a one. It's now referenced R minus one, column minus two. So here one up in the rows, minus one, and then two to the left with the columns. And you see now that you always write this first with the R and then later with the C. And then you put the numbers in these rectangular brackets here, just to ready to reference this. Now, another example would be, for instance, this field. Now you see it's one, two, three, four, five rows and two columns to the right. And then this is what you get. Now what happens if you actually reference a field in the same row or in the same column? Then you see after the row you put nothing, but then it's only the columns minus two that you have because it is indeed in the same row. And of course the same is true for the columns. So if you now reference a field that is in the same column, you just specify the row and you need to specify nothing for the columns. So this is clear. Let's now jump back to our example here. Now I guess you can also more clearly understand here the new references that we see here. So here this field gives us again the sum and now the sum range is specified as RC minus four. So this would be here and then the endpoint is RC minus one, and this would be here. So I guess that makes sense. This is exactly what we saw. But now what happens if we copy this down? And maybe you're already aware what happens, because now if we copy down this formula, it gives us the very same text. So the actual content of the cells here does not change at all. And this is now the key to understand now also this A1 reference style, because what you have here is a so-called relative reference. What this formula does, it is always looks at the current field and then relative to this field, it will then specify the rows and the columns because you defined the rows and the columns, always relative to this field or cell here. And indeed in the A1 style that we had before, you just were not able to directly see that it was a relative reference because here then the values changed. If we now go back to the style, if we now deactivate the R121 reference method here, now again we see that actually here it does look like these references change more or less randomly. But it's not really the case because below the hood, Excel actually works here with these relative references. It always specifies the range relative to the starting position. So now back here in the RC reference method, I hope that you can see how this makes sense. And now here as well, now if we know that this is how it works, that it always references the sales here relative in exactly this way, then it is also completely obvious why, for instance, in this situation, Excel is not automatically now shifting it over. But now, of course, what we do need in some instances is not a relative reference, but an absolute reference. And of course, Excel provides a reference style for this absolute reference as well. So let's now look into another example, which is pretty similar. You have now the quarterly sales data from the companies and then the sum. But now you want to forecast what these companies will make in the next year. And for that, you have set up here this basic growth factor. So you predict that the sales of these companies will grow by 10% percent next year. Now, of course, what you can do, you take the previous year sales figures and then you multiply it with one plus this growth factor now to provide you with this new figure. So basically increasing this figure by 10%. Now, of course, if you just copy this formula down, you can directly see that this is not giving you the results that you expected. And why is this the case? Well, it's the case because due to this relative reference, this field on top of there, it always moves down. But of course, what you want to do is you want to always keep it fixed. 
You don't want this to be a relative reference, but an absolute reference. And yes, you can do this with the RC notation as well, because what you do is you type R and then you directly type in the number of the row or of the column that you want to reference. And what you can now see is that once you change to the RC reference style, here the letters actually switch to numbers. So also the columns now don't have the letters A, B, C and so on, but they have numbers. So now we define first the row and this field here, of course, is in the row number one and you can directly see how this switches up. And now for the column, you put in here the column number three. And now it gives you here this column number. So now you see, you do not now define this anymore as a relative to this field, which is here always indicated with these rectangular brackets in the RC notation, but you just directly type in the number of the row and of the column just directly without this rectangular bracket. And now if you do this and if you copy it over, you see this while this here now, of course, this blue field here still moves this red field here on top always stay fixed. This is now how you include an absolute reference. And now of course you can also do partial absolute references. If you here now move to another example, what we now here want to do is actually we want to now project the growth rates of the different quarters independently. So we want to predict that Q1 will grow with 5%, Q2 with 10, Q3 with 15, Q4 with five and so on. So now of course, if you just would do it in the same way that I just told you. So if you reference here this with a relative field and now you put one plus and now here R1 column 17, or sorry, column 18, which would be exactly this field. If you do this, then this will not give you the correct result because, but here of course it now gives you some numbers, it always keeps this 5% fixed. But now, of course, what is also not the solution is just to highlight this as a relative reference. Because if we now copy this over, this also doesn't give you the right value because now everything changes, right? So while here in this first row, it looks good. Once we now go one row down, now, of course, the references change as well. And now it gives you all these errors and it's just not what you're supposed to do. So what you actually need to do here is that for the rows, you do want to have an absolute reference because you want the growth factor always to be fixed here in the first row. But now for the columns, it's less clear, right? Because for the columns, now you do want a factor which is now here six columns to the left because this is now the factor that you want to keep relative and flexible and if you now include this and copy this down now you see that it works correctly so this one of course references here and now this one of course even though it's another row it still keeps the row correct it moves the growth factor across the columns correctly, but it keeps the row fixed. So in other words, what you can do is you can keep the row reference absolute, but the column reference relative. And of course you can do it the other way around as well. So let's now switch back to the A1 notation to looks like how you actually do this in the A1 notation as well. So we now deactivated the R1C1 reference style and what you see here now is, and this is probably something that you might already be familiar with, here we have now the dollar signs in front of C1 or in front of this growth factor. And again, if we just take them out, you, if you just copy them over without the dollar sign, as we also saw earlier, now of course this reference becomes a relative reference and it moves. But once you now click in here and you insert the dollar signs, and actually you can do that in Windows with the F4 key then it includes this absolute reference. And now if you copy this down, it keeps this fixed. And of course you can also do partial absolute references in the A1 reference style as well. So here now you can directly see that the T, so the column reference, this doesn't have a dollar sign. And indeed, if you here move around, you see that this changes. So here it's an R, S, T, U and so on. But actually the row reference, the one, this one has a dollar sign and it doesn't change independent of which field you're in. So here you can do exactly this. You can now switch around. And again, if you just toggle the F4 key several times, you see that you can toggle around these elements. So here, this would be a completely relevant reference. Clicking once would give you the complete absolute reference. 
Once more, it just fixes the row and once more, it just fixes the column. So that's it. I trust that many of you already knew about absolute references with the dollar signs and probably had an intuitive understanding of many of these things. But I hope that this video really helped you to really jot that down, to really understand on a more technical level how this works and why the formulas and references change the way they do in the A1 notation. As always, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below in the comments section. Please, if you took any value at all out of this video, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all my content. If you want to see even more from me, I also have an Instagram. My Instagram handle is firm learning. And later today, I'm probably going to release my very first IGTV. So stay tuned for that to see what this is going to be all about. In addition to that, I also have a mailing list, which has even more content prepared for you guys. There's a sign up link for that mailing list below in the video description. It was a pleasure for me again to do this video. I release new videos every single Saturday and sometimes even bonus videos throughout the week. So looking forward to talking to you again next Saturday and until then great weekend to all you guys.